Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. Um, this week I just want to show you something slightly different. Normally we do shooter based sort of features and stuff like that. But this week we're going to go do something slightly different. So, what I've created this week is a context menu. So when you right click on the screen, as you can see when I hover over stuff, um, we've got a few options. I've got a walk. I've got an examine, which comes up with examined, and then a cancel. If you click anywhere else, you know, or press escape, for example, or spacebar or anything, it closes that menu because it's not in use. And I call this a context menu. Now, for those who have played a game called RuneScape, this might look very familiar because I it had a heavy influence over me making this. Um, it's a game that I like playing and. Um, I like to recreate features from games that I like playing myself. So, top down template gives you this click to move already in there. Now if you have played RuneScape you'll know that it's slightly different because RuneScape is cell based which is something that I am working on um, which may be an upcoming video. But for now I thought, you know what, I like this little context menu. Um, so as you click around, if you click at the edge of the screen it moves over so it doesn't clip off the screen. Whatever you right click on, it, it finds the name of that object in the world and it puts it in the examine panel. At the moment, um, it doesn't. I'm working on a way of getting each item to have a description, but at the moment, it just comes up with a generic you've examined something. And then the walk here does something similar. It finds if that's a walkable place in the world for the character to get to and it walks as close as it can to it. Um, yeah, and with all that being said, Let's jump straight into the, the guide and let's get this made. For this one what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up a brand new top down uh, project and I'm going to just call this one uh, context. Uh, context. Yeah, oh, spell that with a strange way. Yeah, once you've got that opened, um, we'll get started. Okay, so once your project's opened, you should have something like this. And then when you play straight off the bat, you'll notice that um, you've already got the click to move. So that's that's as straightforward as that. That's already made. Um, and let's get some UI made. So what I like to do is I like to click the content folder and just go all the way back. Uh, I go to top down uh, BPs and go to blueprints and I just create a brand new folder and call this heads up display or HUD for short and then within this I'm going to create two user interface uh, widget blueprints so on the first one I'm going to call this one main HUD and essentially I'm going to use that as a container to hold the menu which we're going to create and then secondly go to user interface again and go to widget blueprint once more and type in context uh, menu menu so essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the menu in one widget and I'm gonna have it displayed on the main widget afterwards uh, and this is, just gives us a little bit more control because what we can do is we can uh, hide the visibility of this menu but then we can we can add other things to the menu later on like health bars and mini maps and stuff like that uh, and I just find that it works the best that way around okay so with them being created what we want to do is just open up the context menu now and what we'll do, we'll start with the context menu, um, so then we can just add that straight to the main. Um, I think that'd be the best way to do it. So first things first, what we're going to do, up in the right hand corner, we're going to change it from fill screen to desired on screen. Now what this does is, rather than it, rather than the UI be set to, um, no matter what the size of the screen is, fill the available space. Uh, we don't want that, we, we want it to be... Um, well, we want it to be a desired, a desired size, um, you know, which we are going to make it size to the content within it, but it's not going to try and just fill the space it's got available. It's just going to take what it needs and then, and then that's going to be that. So to start with, in the hierarchy on the left, you're going to have a canvas panel. Um, now what I'm going to start out with is I'm going to pop a border in there. Now I like to use borders because if we zoom in a little bit, Borders can be given a colour, um, but one of the downsides to a border is um, it can only take one child. So 
Um, now we've got a border, I'm going to have to put a, another object inside which can take multiple, which is not a problem because most of them that we're going to use uh, are like that anyway. Now in terms of the actual formatting, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add everything we need on here. So I'm going to, I'm going to, if you will, put all the puzzle pieces on the table and then we're going to, we're going to refine it afterwards. So as we're going through this, it, it's probably going to look really bad. Uh, but we'll then we'll, we'll go back through it um, and adjust the size of boxes and the anchors and all that sort of stuff to make it look right. Um, I'm not that great when it comes to UI um, and it did take me a long time to make the one that you saw in the example at the beginning of the video. So I have actually got the other project open at the side as a reference uh, just to prevent me from making mistakes. Um, but essentially uh, you, you just use that as a guide, if you will, um, and you can customise it however you want. Um, and hopefully you'll be a bit better with UI than, than myself. I don't make enough of them to be to be good. But anyway, enough of my ranting, let's, let's, let's get on to it. So yeah, um, we've got the border, and then the next panel that we want is going to be a panel. Um, it's going to be a size box. Now a size box is good because what it allows you to do is... Well, exactly as the name applies. It, it allows you to override different sizes. Now, realistically, we're not we're not going to use that. We're just going to use it as a bit of a padding box, and because it can take multiple um, children, um, you know that, that's good for us anyway. Now, inside this size box, what we're going to do is um, we're going to have sort of like a title. Then we're going to have a button. Then we're going to have another button. Then we're going to have another button, and then you know you can keep adding buttons as a as you will um, but because these are going to be aligned in sort of like a, a vertical in a, in a column uh, the next thing that we probably want to add is what's called a vertical box so to the size box add a vert box now the vert box as the name implies it restricts the items that you put in it to a vertical pattern so if i then chuck in a text a text and a text or a button a button and a button um, you will see that they'll be stacked on top of each other no. Um, likewise, you can have a horizontal box, and they'll be stored, side, um, you know, horizontally. But we, we, we don't need that. So yeah, vertical box. So with that in, I'm then going to chuck in another size box inside that, which gives us this little little bit there. Um, inside that size box, because I want to add some colour. Again, this will all make more sense as we start to format it. I'm going to add another border. Within that border, I'm going to add an overlay. Yep. Uh, within the overlay, I'm going to add a text. So if we scroll back to the top, under common, got text. Text, great. So this is where it's going to start to look terrible. Um, yep. So that's that. So what we want to do now is we want to add another thing to this size box no we don't we want to minimize the size box let's go to the vertical box now and we're going to add a button so we've got like a title if you will so this size box was basically like the let's call it title box title box and then this first button is going to be our walk button um, I'm then going to grab another button and chuck that in the vert box and call this one examine button did I intentionally not put the space in there? let's get rid of that space Okay, so it doesn't change it, that's annoying. But and then we're gonna drag another button into the vertical box. So now we've got three boxes boxes, three buttons on top of each other. We're gonna change this one to cancel. Cancel, right. And then essentially each each button at the moment is just this unsightly grey box. We're just gonna add some text onto the button. Um to make it look a bit nicer. So let's grab this text and add it to the walk button and now you can see the walk button's got this big block of text inside um, and, uh, yeah we'll do that in a minute and then examine text and then a, and a cancel text 
Okay, so now we can start... That's all the pieces now, really. Uh, we might add some spaces in between here and there just to make it look a little bit nicer. But uh, for, for now, let's let's just let's just leave it. I'll tell you what, actually, but <laughs> that being said, let's, let's chuck some spaces in between our buttons. So if we go down to, I think it's primitive. There we go, under primitive. Let's chuck a spacer in between, let's say this examine button and then again in between the walk button and the examine button so just when you're doing this just make sure you don't put them like inside these buttons but in between them so if you minimize it you'll actually you'll still see them in between yeah okay now uh, another thing what I'm actually going to do um, the examine button. There's going to be an examine text. So let me let me just press play for you. Um, actually, that's not going to work. Uh, let me drag over the other project. So when we press play and we right click, you can see examine and then floor are two different font colors. Now that examine text is kind of permanently there, and then the only thing that's changing is this this yellow or orange text, which will just find whatever it's been clicked on. And, and, and put it there so what what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna split this examine buttons text box um, in into two essentially so if you right click on your text block underneath the examine button and wrap with horizontal box so like the vertical box is giving me this sort of column of items a horizontal box now is going to restrict me whatever I put inside it's going to be putting them next to each other so because I've got a text block here which is going to be over on the right over the content let's just change this to um, examine I'm then gonna to have to have a space and then the, the other word so I'm just gonna chuck in this horizontal box a spacer which is put that at the end and then if we chuck in another text in the horizontal box, you'll see that now we've got examine and then whatever item we're gonna have. Yeah. Um, we might wanna change the padding on this spacer just to separate them a bit better, but we'll, we'll do that afterwards. Let's just fix this top bit for, for now. Okay, so starting with the border at the top. Um, so as you can see, you know, this is kind of like really small, um, so everything would look a, a mile nicer if we had it set to this size, let's say. So you can see here that size has now been changed from 300, oh sorry, from 100, I think it was by default, yeah, something like that, to 300. Now that's great and all, but we don't have to, we don't have to want to keep changing this value to do it. But luckily there's a size to content box, which will just, as the description there suggests, it'll just auto size. If you hit that, that will automatically change no matter what's in here. So this text block, for example, if we now change this to a really long named thing, well, close enough. Um, oh no, it's spelled right, but um, you can see that it's, it's sized to the object. So that's what we want to keep ticked. Um, I'm just going to change this back now to blank or something like that um, so with the border selected just make sure that you've got that size to content selected um, and that, that, that'll make sure that the size is right no matter what um, and, and while while we're actually while that blank selected why not we may as well do this so underneath appearance you've got color and opacity so you can just click on this white area here um, this white blank box and then you can just pick a color I quite like orange because it stands out that and it's reminiscent to some of the items in RuneScape as I mentioned earlier this was based on so now we've got this neat little thing uh, while we're mess messing with text we may as well click on this text block and just change this to walk here oh that's not spelled right here um, and then let's change this one to cancel now you can't see it because it's white but up at this top bit here we've got um, a text box um, I'll tell you what instead of changing 
that, let's add, um, is it strike? It might be, is it strike or is it shadow? Mm, it might be shadow. Let's, let, under shadow, let's set the alpha to one. Hey, there you go. Um, and let's set the desired width to, okay, it's not desired width. Reset that. Uh, let's set the shadow offset to 2. Nah, 2 will be fine. There you go, and that gives you more of a, a blocky outline. Now, up at the top, you've got uh, alignment. So for this text block, because it's in this overlay, we just want to center a line um, or left align, whichever you want. To be honest, let's left align it and let's just left align everything else. That, that'll probably look a lot better, won't it? Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, that's that's much better. Instead of having text block, I'm going to change this to choose option. There you go. And the the border that it's sat in, I'm actually going to change the color of that. So not the very top border, but the second border underneath your title box. Let's just change that color. So where it says appearance, you've got brush and brush color. Um, you can select brush color and we can change that to whatever you want. Um, typically I'll just go for a gray of any choosing really. It doesn't really matter at this point, I might just go a bit darker actually. That might be better. So now we've got this choose option. Um, now the border that everything's sat on is white at the moment. So with the top border selected this time, let's go to brush color. And again, I'm just gonna choose like a really dark gray. But this time I'm actually gonna set the alpha to like 0.1. So it's basically transparent, but it's still there, but it's basically transparent. And then the only other thing now to change really, apart from spacing here and there, um, is gonna be if you select your buttons. So I've got walk button here. I'm going to change the background color alpha to zero. So effectively the button's actually invisible, but you can leave that at like 0.1 so it's faintly visible, but I, I, I like the text itself to be the button, if you will. So I just set the actual button color to, uh, to, to zero alpha. So again, examine button, background color, click on the white box, set the alpha to zero, and then same again for the cancel. Okay. Uh, cancel background color alpha zero. Yeah, okay. So I like the way that that looks. Um, I think the examine's just a little bit strange. So I'm gonna left align the boxes within it. And there we go. That looks that looks a bit neat now. So hit compile, and you've got you've got your your basic menu there. And actually, I tell you what, that's spacer doesn't I don't like the space in between it so with the spacer in between the examine and the blank uh, selected let's go to the spaces padding and let's just add I don't know one to the left and one to the right well, I guess you could just add two to the left it's not gonna make that much of a difference is it yeah that's a bit better um, I might even go as far to say three Yeah, we'll leave it at free. That, that's fine for me. So there you go, you've got a little context menu, which, let's just double check this works. Um, big blank text, it still adjusts. Uh, it still adjusts. So let's leave that as blank for now. Hit compile, hit save, and then let's add it to our main hood. So go back to your main map, open up your main hood scroll down on the left hand side in your uh, palette and at the bottom you'll have a user created uh, drop down and under that you'll see a sample and then you'll see the context menu that you've created and at this point we could just drag and drop it and let's just place it in on the screen let's hit compile now if you hit play nothing's going to happen um, because we've not drawn it to the screen as of yet 
But let's just do that before we sort of close down this chapter. Let's go back to the top down BP under blueprints. And then I'm going to add this to my top down controller. So in here you've got, oh, one sec. Once you open this up, you're probably going to be in the function that's sort of automated for you. Just close it out. You don't need that. Um, in the event graph, the main event, uh, we want to go and type in begin. Begin. And you'll get this ev event begin play node. And essentially this is called, as soon as you've pressed play, this is, this is fired straight away. What we want to do is create uh, widget. So under user interface, you've got create widget. That's going to ask you for a class. If you select that and you want to select main HUD, off the return value, if you want to drag off that and go to add to, and then you'll have two choices, uh, player screen or viewport. I always pick viewport. Uh, and with that, that's all created. Now, what um, a good rule of thumb is um, if you pull off your return value and do promote to variable because the reason you'd want to do this um, so I don't want to get rid of that just connect that straight up there um, and give this an appropriate name so I've called this main hood ref um, and the, the reason that you want to do this is because later on in other sort of blueprints we can get a reference to this widget if we want to manipulate it which at some point we are going to want to do that um let me see if i can do this as an example in the graph of one of these don't worry about me going into things here i'm just using this as an example but now if i was to get the player controller which the player controller is this top-down controller we've just created this widget in. And then I was to do a cast to top-down controller, which is this actual blueprint. So the get controller is just a reference to this. And then I'm casting to it, so I'm essentially becoming it, just temporarily. Then as the controller, I can type in HUD. And you can see here now, with inside this uh, context menu, I've got a reference to my main HUD, so I can manipulate it in ways. So that, that that's why we're going to do that. But just ignore ignore all that for now. But it, that was just a bit of a uh, bit of education. So create that, uh, and then we're good to go. So if you go back to your map now and press play, you should have your menu over the top of your game, which you can see. Right. all functions is right you can see that when you're pressing these buttons you know they're all moving around as you'd expect them to as a button would so with that being said let's get it to track the mouse and let's get these buttons working as they should okay so before we actually go into the actual setting up the location of the widget on the screen so when we click I think what we should do is we should just set up these uh, button presses so they actually do something before we, we get into that. Uh, so that's quite easy actually. So within the context menu, so the widget with actually all the buttons and stuff like that. If you head over to the graph and essentially you can get rid of all of this. So just highlight what's already on there. Now when we press these buttons, now when, when you click on a button, so by default a button uh, appears as a variable, by default because if you're adding a button you're expecting to take some sort of input, so automatically they're in, in the user interface they're all automatically classed as a variable which is like uh, a changeable value, you've either clicked it or you haven't clicked it. And because of that, you're given these events down at the bottom, on clicked, on pressed, on released, on hover, on unhovered. Um, now, that's great. If we click that, we've got this event graph now for when we click the cancel button. Now, that's good and all, but we can't say, like, close yourself, because... 
for that to be possible, we're going to have to make like the entire menu not visible, but from within itself, um, and, and that doesn't work all that well. So, what we actually need to do, we actually we need to be able to communicate from this cancel button to the main HUD to say, well, if I click cancel, please hide this menu, and then when I right click again, show the menu. So we need to form a, a, a layer of communication between this main HUD and the context um, menu. Now it's really simple, but you know, I'm going into it probably far too much, but it's just really simple. Now over on the side underneath your, your buttons, you've got this thing called an event dispatcher. Now an event dispatcher is, is essentially just a messenger. What we can do is when we press the cancel button, we can send out an event to say, right, cancel's been pressed. If anybody's interested, you can do something with that information. So we can send out an event, right, cancel's been pressed, and then we can have the HUD listen for that event. And when cancel's pressed or the event's been dispatched, we can say, right, you know what? Let's get this whole context menu and let's set its visibility here which is under behaviors to not visible or hidden or collapsed, something like that. And that works far better. So with that being said, just go to your event dispatchers, add an event, and we're just gonna call this one, cancel. Cancel event. Press it again, examine event. And again, and walk event. Obviously, you can set the names to whatever you, you've given it. So now we've got three event dispatches, uh, and these all link to each button. And you know they're really simple to use. So for cancel, you want to drag your event dispatcher for cancel, drag it onto your event graph, and you want to call this. So essentially, we are calling an event that cancel has been pressed. So drag. Uh, no, well, you don't need to drag cancel in actually. You can select cancel and when it's um, I'm gonna say on pressed because I think on clicked is uh, Specific to mouse clicks whereas on pressed is both mouse and touch So we'll go with that one just to just to catch all So essentially link that up. So now we've got an event on pressed cancel button make a cancel event which then we will be able to pick that up in the main hood but before we go over to the hood let's just drag the rest in so i'll go for examine call and walk call you don't have to be as neat but i like to so walk on pressed and examine link those up make it Morning, right, hit compile and that's pretty much it for that um, now if we head over to the main hood which you should still have open and we now go to well, I'll tell you what one thing we should do to start with is let's just select the context menu from the hierarchy and let's just scroll down on the details panel on the right and let's get to behavior and let's just set the visibility um, to collapse now just before we click it just let's take note that it's currently set to non hit testable that's probably something that we're gonna set it back to um, once we want it to be visible but for now we're gonna we're gonna set it to collapsed so collapsed is not visible and takes up no space in the la layout if it's hidden it's not visible but still occupies space now I'm yet to run into a situation where I have had this be an issue, but just to be safe, I always go for collapsed. Um, when I know what issue that raises, I'll probably make another video about it. But for the most part, you know, I've overlapped stuff, and you know, I've, I've never really had an issue. So collapsed is what I'm going for. Just gonna hit compile and before I do anything else I'm just gonna press play just make sure that that menu is disappeared which it has um, and now let's let's head over to the graph so you're in your main hood just before we go any further and we're gonna to head to graph now if you've been into this one before you may notice something slightly different now already if we select the context menu from the left under variables 
we've got three of um not three but four events um three of them we're interested in now and the fourth one we may be interested in at some point so we've got a cancel event an examine event and a walk event and that's because we've casted these events that we've made so let's let's add a cancel event let's go back let's add an examine event and let's go back and let's add a walk event so now we just need to populate all of these so the cancel one is really simple when we pull off that we want to set the visibility of the context menu to collapsed so somewhere we're going to write some uh, blueprint to say when we click on the screen open the menu and then if we press cancel we're going to close it that's your first one ticked off examine now examine's not quite as, as simple uh, we actually need to link to um, the controller to find out what's being clicked on in the world and then we're going to feed that information back and same again for the walk um, this one's actually quite this one's a bit simpler because the game is already doing um, oh sorry the top down controller blueprint is already doing the code we want this to do we just need to link the two together so yeah let's, let's jump into that so let's head over to the top down controller and let's see some of this other stuff that it's already doing so if we look here um, they've, they've got a, a you know a bog standard bit of code here every tick what it's doing is it's looking for inputs and then it's gonna find get to hit result under the cursor by channel so essentially this is a line trace wherever you click in the viewport well, I'll tell you what I'll show you so wherever my mouse is on the viewport what it does is it fires a line from my mouse on the screen into the world and find where's that where's that point going to be in the world if I go from the screen directly down it's not necessarily directly down but underneath the mouse where is this in the world and it's and it's just it's just doing a line straight down and then whatever it hits is the result of that and then all it's doing is it's telling this character which is set up on the nav mesh which we get into some other stuff here uh, this world let's just scroll down has a nav mesh bound now just as a little side note if you press p on your keyboard please work don't let me down it's gonna let me down Okay, it's just gonna make me out to be a, a liar, isn't it? Oh, there we go. So I don't know why that that jib then, um, unless it was loading. I don't, I don't think it was, but I, I had to click on this um, position widget. That was weird. So by pressing P on the keyboard, what I've actually done is I've made the nav mesh bounds visible. So essentially, what a nav mesh bound is is this this yellow box around the outside is my boundary of where my character is able to walk to and then what the game does is it detects within that space what it considers to be a, a movable space and then in the controller what they've done is they've gone right take wherever the mouse is underneath the cursor and then whatever I hit it feeds that hit result into this move to that location now this move to location is actually a function so if we double click on it we'll actually see what's going on in here so we're taking that hit result we're breaking that hit result down into its sort of made up bits and pieces where one of them one of the outputs of a hit or one of the sort of bits of data that's within a hit is the location so it, it does some simple maths just to figure out where the character's location is and how it's going to get from the location to where it's where we've been clicked and then we do a simple move to which runs on the AI system so it's art, you know artificial intelligence the 
the blueprint works out a route from where you currently are to where it wants to be, the goal, and it moves your character. So, back to the top down. Let's get out of this function. I got lost myself then. Um, we actually want to take this uh, get hit result under cursor um, because we're actually going to need to walk to this place ourselves. So, what I'm thinking of doing actually is instead of tapping into this, we could just sort of like steal some of this and replicate it over there. So, oh, pardon me. With that being said, let's just press Control W. And we're just going to make a copy of this because we're going to need this. Um, so we need to save this hit result data um, so then we know where to walk uh, when we open up the menu. So you just want to drag off the hit result and do a promoter variable. And then just while the text is still highlighted here, let's just do mouse hit. To be fair, I should have left the rest of the text there, but yeah, just mouse hit result. Just so then it's appropriately labeled. And then, um, obviously, this needs to be executed um, to, to store. Um, now, obviously, this is going to be executed when we right click somewhere um, to, to bring up the menu. Now, what we could do, um, you could just type in right mouse button and, you know, just directly link it to that. However, I think a better option would be to go to Edit and Project Settings and let's set up an actual input function for it. So under Engine on the left hand side you've got Input and then under Action Mappings just press this little plus sign. Um, this one's going to be uh, Context menu. Uh, menu. Uh, context menu. Yep. And then for the actual key mapping itself, instead of none, we want to select this and go to mouse and we want the right mouse button. So essentially all I've done here is I've just assigned that right mouse button an, act, a, a, an, an official purpose uh, and that its purpose is to open up the context menu. If yours does other things, then obviously you can, you can change that name. Uh, and that's it, you, know, you can just close that down. So now back to the top down controller, we can now type in context and we should have the action event context menu and this is a, this is the same thing as the right click so once it's pressed uh, obviously we want to set this mouse hit result and then at the moment all we're doing is we're, we're just when we say well, once once we click the right mouse button we're, we're saving this mouse hit data but we're not actually opening the context menu. So before we proceed with this walk, I think we should just set up the open the context menu. Just so then it's it's a sort of it's doing something functionally. Or something that we can actually see. Now before we can do this, we just need to go to the main HUD. And essentially we need to we need a function to say make this context uh, menu visible. Um, so yeah you can click anywhere really but right down here at the bottom we want to do a custom not customer custom event and let's just put open context I keep doing that with capital letters uh, open context and this is just a simple custom event and it's you know it's going to be basic let's drag in our context menu reference let's drag off this and we want to set the visibility Let's link these up and it's defaulted to visible there and that's exactly what we want. Um, oh actually no it isn't, we don't want visible, we want non-hit testable because that's what it was by default um, earlier on. Uh, yeah. So if we hit compile now we've got this open context reference. So back to our top down controller. Now obviously we, we've just made that open context function in our main HUD. Now we could drag off here and, and relate to it but that'd look a bit messy so let's just grab our variable and drag that in, get that, pin that under there like that and then let's just drag off it and should, if we type in open, we have a, a function here, open context. So let's link that up. So now what we're doing is when we right click we're saving um, a, 
uh, like the hit data, the location and all that sort of stuff uh, of where the mouse was when we did that and then we're opening up the context menu. So if I hit compile now and press play, you'll see that when we right click that menu opens and when we click cancel because we've set that up that, that works. Every time we right click, you know, obviously it's not moving just yet, we've not got to that point and when we click walk it doesn't do anything but that's what we're going to do next. So, um, how are we going to walk? So, at the moment what we've got is we, we're recording where our click was. Um, and then, if we just move back down to this, obviously what what this function's doing is click and go there. So, it's taking our click and it's, you know, which is generating a hit result. And then it's feeding that into this move to location and it's, it's doing just that. So essentially, we kind of want the same thing. We we want to we want to move to this location if we click walk. So what we can do is I tell you what. Let, let's 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 steal this move to hit location. Press Control and W with it selected, and then let's just drag up here. And I tell you what, I'll we'll make this separate. So we're recording this hit result, and we we can put it we can we can use it here because this hit result, when you go into it, it's already set up to take the hit result, break it into its location, and go to it. So if we just close that, because that's already set up like that, we can just take our mouse hit result that we've just created here, and let's just plug this straight into that. So now it's taking where we right click, and it's going to use that. Now, obviously, we don't want it just to automatically do that. So let's create a custom event. Custom event. And let's put walk here. Let's just link these up. And, you know, this can be like a little self-contained function. Uh, walk here. And then let's just put context. Click. Just for reference. And I'll tell you what I'm going to call that red or something. Pink. That'll do. Yeah, so we've just got we've just made this this function here that's going to be like every time this walk here is called, it's going to walk to wherever our mouse was clicked. Now, because obviously when we right click uh, in our game, the the walk menu appears. So essentially, we need to link that walk button to this event. So if we go back to our main HUD now um, and what we need to do is we need a reference to this top-down controller so now normally I delete these so let's just get rid of the event take and let's get rid of the event pre-construct if you've already del I tell you what I'll delete them if you've already deleted those don't worry about it if you haven't you can use it but if you just do this if you right click and type in event and then construct an event construct is essentially the same thing as begin play. Now, because at the <laughs> when we do begin play, let's, let's go back. I'm, I'm on the controller now. When we begin play, we create this widget, and then once this is created, it's what's considered it's it's been constructed, it's been built. You know, it's been added to the game, and at the same time, this calls because it's just been constructed in the top down. And now this this event calls because this is the beginning of time for the main HUD. That's why it's called event construct instead. Um, but essentially, because it's called at the begin, this is begin. Right at the beginning, what we want to do is we want to cast to our top-down controller, which is this blueprint. Now, for us to get for this cast to be successful we need a reference we need an input object and luckily for us we can type in get player controller and that'll that'll just search for what the active controller is which will be this one which means this cast will be successful um, now as the top-down controller we don't really want to do anything yet as it but we want to create a reference so if you drag off that and promote to variable um, and I tell you what we can leave that reference because it's, it's, it is it is appropriate 
So what this is going to do, at the beginning of this HUD being made, it's going to get the player controller, cast to it, and then save a reference to it, so then we can we can do bits and pieces to it. Um, now, with that being said, our walk event can now utilize this reference, because when, when we press the walk button on our HUD, when we press the walk button, this is going to fire. So what we can do is we can we can say, hey, in the top-down controller, you've got a function for walking. This one, walk here. So what I want you to do is, as the top-down controller, uh, walk here. Just like that. So let's hit compile. And let's give that a test. Why is that? Oh, did I not compile? Okay. Hit compile. I think what the reason that was a warning was because it existed, but because I'd not compiled, it had not set it in stone that that was a reachable function. So if I press compile now, that should... Yeah, there we go. We've got a green tick now that warning's gone away. Um, so now we've compiled. Let's just give that a quick test so I'm gonna right click here now obviously the menus not moving with it just yet but if I press walk here I'm hoping if I've done that right it should run over there brilliant the walk to and the cancel are now both done so if I... that's brilliant and you can see how that pathfinder is working because if I right click on top of here which I know that menu's not moved, but the, the location should have updated. If I press walk here, on top of here is not a reachable location. So it should it should move me the closest it can to that position. Which is obviously in front of it. And same again, if I was to right click on top of here. Uh, let, let me cancel that for a better effect. If I right click on top of here, the menu reappears. If I press walk, it'll move me. Okay, so it's not actually finding a, 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 a movable location here. But if I move down there, there we go, that's reachable. So up there must, have been, must be so far out of the realm of reachability that it doesn't even try. Whereas with this one, it tries to get me as close as possible. So that's how the AI works um, in, in the background. But yeah, let's get out of this and let's just let's move on. So one other thing that we need to actually do um, is... Obviously, once I right click and I press walk, this menu shouldn't really exist anymore. We should get rid of that. And that's a really, that's a really quick addition. So we're, I think maybe, yeah, here we've got it. So here for the cancel event, which is just a collapse, we can click on both of these. By holding control, you can select both of them at the same time. Press control W. And essentially, we just want to add this to the end of our walk. So I'm just going to pop that there. Move that up. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk to that location, but then close the menu because we've done the action we asked for. So click there, walk, it walks, the menu closes. So that's that finished. So I think next what I might do is go for the examine. So I'm just going to grab these and move them down so they're all together. They're all my functions so far. Yeah, I think I'm going to go along with examine. Um, so... Do, 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 do. How are we going to go about this? So one of the things that we're going to want to do is, I, I tell you what, when we click examine, um, we're going to want that menu to um, to disappear. So one of the first things we can do is just set the visibility to collapsed. Because the, the examine message is, is going to pop up either in the developer's log for now until you've got somewhere else to put it. Or, um, well, that's the only place you can put it for now until you've set something else up. Um, and for the time being, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set a predetermined uh, developer's message uh, saying that you have examined something. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build on top of this after this tutorial. To, to link to the data of each object in the world so then you can set up sort of like funky descriptions so what do I mean by that so 
let's say I right click on this cube. At the moment it's blank because it's not looking in the world and seeing what this object is. That's what we're going to do in just a sec. But when we press examine, obviously the menu closes and we've examined something. Um, rather than just a blank statement examined comes up, I'm good after this tutorial, um, maybe next week or the week after, depending on other people's requests and stuff. Um, I'm going to set it up where each object in the world, you know, whether it's the floor, these weird cubes, you know, other game objects, swords, armor, stuff on the floor, bushes, whatever. When you when you right click on them and examine them, you it will go into the blueprint of each object or actor in the world, and it'll get a, a description you've set. So this will be like instead of just the word examined, it'll look into each actor in the world and it would be like something you've set like this is just a boring cube or um, this is some default text or let's say you click on a sword and it's like this is an almighty sword um, or something that, that's something you're gonna have to set for each actor um, that, that's gonna work on obviously a, a data set uh, behind the game but yeah enough of that. that that's something I'm gonna be working on so if you're interested in that make sure you subscribe and you, you'll be you'll be kept up to date for when that comes out but yeah um, let's sort that label out. <laughs> so before, I shouldn't have closed that. When we right click, obviously everything's blank at the moment. Examine blank, examine blank, examine blank, examine blank. So we don't want blank at the moment. We want to update that text to say whatever, um, whatever the object is. We want that to to be displayed rather than blank. So to do that, what we need to do is we need to we need to go into the context. I tell you what, let me, let me just get into it a little bit. So open up your context menu. And if you open up the blank text here. So examine's always going to say the, stay the same. You want the word examine to never change, really. Um, just readjust. Um, you don't want the examine to change at all. But this blank you want to update. Now to update the text on a UI, you need to do something called a bind. Now, over on the right hand side, you'll see here contents text blank. And we, we set it to blank ourselves earlier. Normally, it'd just be like text block or something like that. Now, on the right hand side, there is a button here called bind. Now, obviously, we don't have a bind at the moment, but we need to create one. So, we're going to do just that. We're going to create a binding. And at the moment, this is just called something junky like get text to zero. Let's just rename this to, I don't know, update examined text. Actually, yeah, let's just leave it like that. Text. So th this is now called update examined text. Now, obviously, we need a reference to something we've actually clicked on. Now, luckily, something that we did earlier on, something that we did earlier on in the top down controller was we got a hit result underneath our cursor and we stored this in mouse hit data now just for reference what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split this just for you to see what part of stuff I've got in here now apart from that being in the way what we've got we've got obviously location which we use to walk but we've got hit actor and hit component now that could be very useful because when we hit an actor or a component, we can get the name of that object, whether it's the floor, whether it's a cube, whether it's a stream, a sword, or an amulet. We can get them components, and we can get the display name. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to get the display name from this hit result and display it in our menu. So we've got back to our context menu. So obviously for us to do that, we're going to need to get the player controller. And that's going to enable us then to cast to the top down controller. So let's just link that in there. So now as the top down controller, we can, we can make use of that mouse hit result. So now we, we've got reference to this hit result. We've all that data. Oh, let's go back to the right one. So now we can, you know, you could actually break that if you want. And we, now we have 
I might have done that too fast. If you pull off there, there's a little break hit result button just at the bottom. You click on that and you'll get this this menu and just drop it down and you'll you'll see everything that I can see. So now we have we have the full use of these hit components, hit actors and all, all that sort of stuff. Now because most objects in the world are actors, that's exactly what I'm gonna use. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag off the hit actor and there's uh, there's a utility called get display display yeah. so what that does is let's just see what the description says so it returns the display name or actor label um, for displaying as debug aid now that's great essentially it takes the name of the object you've clicked on and gives you the name of it so what, what the name would be, so if I select this cube in the world here, this one would be called cube. And if I select this one, this will be cube 21. And if I select the floor, that'll be just floor. And you get the idea. Whatever you click on, it'll give you this object's name. So hopefully you've got more appropriately named stuff. Instead of like cube 26, you've got rock. <laughs> it, they don't need to have numbers. Just, just cube would have done for this, but that's just the way Unreal sort of puts multiple stuff in the world. Anyhow, um, back to the context menu. We've got this display name now. So what we want to do is we want to do two string. No, it's not to string, is it? It's um, to text. I tell you what, actually, it should do it itself. If I drag that to here, there we go, it does the conversion for you. And that's pretty much it, to be honest. Yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much it. So we're just going to get... I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit. So we we get the controller. We get the hit result. Because obviously all this is only going to happen once we've clicked on something. Get the hit result. Whatever actor we hit in the world, get its name. And then let's give that a test. So we're going to hit compile. Press play. Now if I right click on this cube. There we go. Cube. Cube 21. Cube 26. Floor. See if I can get this template. No, I can't because it's like a little silly node in the middle. Cube 2, cube 14. And you can see as well, obviously, as because cube is got a short name, but cube 26 is a bit bigger, you can see how our menu as well as auto size now. Because we did that size to content earlier on. Brilliant. So the menu closes, cancel works, walk works. Brilliant. So now all that's live is left is for us to get that menu to move around with the mouse now this this bit's slightly more complicated than the rest that's why i've left it till last um, i'm just going to go make a quick coffee and i'll be straight back with you okay got a fresh coffee and we're good to go let's get this uh this ui moving so if we just nip over to the main hood and we go to the designer and we just click on the uh, the, the context menu over in the right, you can see it's got position X, position Y, size, alignment, and anchors. Now, the anchor is this little star up at the top corner. Now, if you click on this and move it around, you can see that your position X and your position Y is changing. So we need to take all this into consideration. That the position is based on where the anchor is. Now, if I move this a lot closer to the menu you can see that the, the values are a lot closer to zero so essentially what I'm thinking is if we just move the anchor to where we've mouse clicked so let's say we click boom we click here and then we set the position of the X and the Y to zero that's exactly where our mouse clicked Brilliant. So that's the, that's the way we're going to do it. I right click here. We'll set the position to zero and zero. Brilliant. Now, there is going to be an instance where somebody clicks here. And then when we set this to zero and zero, half of our menus off the screen. This is where the alignment comes in. This essentially flips the alignment which, if I get this the right way around, I think one on the X, or minus one, what is it, one, um, that moves 
this value over to. We'll, we'll, we'll get into the specifics of it when we get in. But we're going to use the alignment. Once we're past a certain threshold on the screen, so I'll tell you what, let me just reverse that. And let me move this over. Tell you what, let's put that there, put that there. Right. So at the moment, our anchor's in the very top left hand corner, and so is our menu. If I move this anchor over here, you can see that this is 1921. And if I move it down to the bottom corner, by 1081. So essentially, because my screen size is 1920 by 1080, which is, you know, 1080p HD, I can say, actually, when I get to about, you know, 1750, or let's say like, once I get to about 85% of the screen, no matter what, I want to flip this alignment so that it, my menu's at the other side rather than sticking off the screen. And I can say for both the, you know, the X and the Y. So when I'm, if I'm this far, flip the alignment on the X, and if I'm this far, flip the alignment on the Y, and if I'm both, do both. And that's really easy to do. So now we've got an understanding of why or how we're going to do this. Let's jump into the graph and let's get this made. Um, there's going to be a lot of parts here um, and hopefully you don't lose me a little bit um, or I don't lose you. If any part of this doesn't work for you um, after the fact, um, please give me a comment down below and I will assist you as best I can. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. So jump off to the graph and everything here is going to happen under... Um, we want it under the open context menu. Yeah. So that, that's when we first call it. And I think that's probably going to be the best place to put it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight this and I'm just going to drag it over to the side. Just so we've got some fresh space. You know, plenty of space. Because this is going to be quite a long blueprint. I'm going to drag these two. And because I, I want to update the location before I make it visible. Really, the visibility is going to be one of the last things that we do. Now, there's also going to be a prerequisite. We're going to need some sort of location data. Now, obviously, um, we've got this top-down controller reference, which gives us, um, you know, the ability to use this mouse data that we've got. However, this mouse data. Split it. This mouse data really gives you like the location in like it's a bit different. It, it it takes it from like a world's perspective rather than a screen's perspective, and we want to take a screen's perspective. Um, so what we're actually going to do, we're going to chuck in a, a get mouse position here. Um, which let me just show you get mouse position. I believe it is. So this takes the X and the Y position of the mouse, but it takes it in sort of screen coordinates. The retrieves the X and Y screen coordinates. So this is this is world coordinates, uh, and this is screen coordinates. So we need we want to take a reference of these two um, because it is going to be more more accurate. Now I don't want to record it in the top down controller. Um, do I or don't I? Is it going to make a difference that much? Um, I tell you, let's 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 do it. So if we go to uh, create a variable, because that's what we're going to need to store this somewhere. And I actually want to create. Uh, it's going to be mouse pos mouse position. And instead of having where this is defaulted to a boolean, we want to click on that and we want to click on vector. Uh, a vector. If we press compile, you'll get this. A vector allows us to store an X, Y, and a Z. Now, obviously, we don't need the Z for this for this instance, but uh, we can just omit that from saving it. So I've just dragged this in into the 
into the event graph and I've selected set. What I'm going to do is I'm going to split this pin. So right click on the pin and split. So I just want to link these two. So I only want the X and Y. Not bothered about the Z. That can stay zero. Don't really care. And let's just link these back up. So essentially when we right click we're going to get the X and Y position right there and then. Uh, and this, this will help us update our UI and then this records our location in the world where our mouse is and that does well you already know what that does that helps us walk and stuff like that so now we've got that set if we go back to our main HUD and as top-down controller we can drag this in let's get that and we can use the mouse uh, POS vector let's, let's have that and let's split that so now what we're going to do, we're going to use this mouse X and Y, and we need to we need to figure out where that is in relation to the screen side. At the moment, if I press play, this window is not 1080p, and you can see that that's already started to mess up a little bit there. Um, this is not 1080p. When I full screen it. Now it might be, but we've got to we've got to be able to make this to work on no matter what size display it is, because if somebody's got an ultra wide or someone's got a lot smaller, you know, which is only like 1280 by 720, you know, so sorry, but uh, we we need to make it work for for all them displays. So to take that into consideration, what we can do is we can also get the viewport. Uh, that's all one word, viewport size. And if we split this, you can see that now we've also got an X and Y of the screen size. So, what we need to do is we, we need to kind of like divide these by each other to get the actual position we want for uh, our widget. I'm probably going to struggle to explain this. So, what I'm going to do... Um, let's just go to designer. Because that's alright, that's really good though. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to set this back to the centre. Reset our alignment. Right. The reason I did that is just because obviously, it, if I press play now, it's back in the center where we expected it to be. Back to main HUD, back to graph. What I'm going to do is when I'm just going to debug a little bit of this just so then you get a full understanding of what data's being sort of generated here and hopefully that will help me guide you through it if not you're gonna have to take my word for it and just copy and paste and hope for the best um, I apologize if we get to that but right what I've done is I've created a print string and that's just gonna spit out on the screen every time we click what we get so to start off I'm just gonna debug this mouse X position and I'm going to press play. Now every time I click, we're getting a number. So when I'm over on this right hand corner, it's zero. Right on the edge of the screen, it's zero. And when I go onto this side, it's 1280. So it's, that's exactly what I mentioned earlier. You know, some people have got smaller screens, but you know, if I could get right on the edge, it'd probably be 1280, but we're getting, we're getting 1277. In the middle, we're about halfway, you know, whatever um, so it's giving you um, a, a position based on the exact dimension of the screen um, so we're, we're close to zero there and we're close to the full size of the screen there. that being said obviously the Y is exactly the same up in the, up at the top no matter where up at the top you know we are close to zero and down the bottom we're gonna be near like that 720 mark brilliant so with that information 
we can tell this context menu, put your anchor's location here, and that'll work. But, if we, we can't really hard code them figures in to say, be at this location, or set this at this location, because the, the viewport size might change. So we need to we need to divide these two by each other to get what what percent of the screen are you in? And this is where my failings in in, in maths show sure, because I can't explain it that well. Um, but with a lot of poking around, I got this to work. So I'm just gonna muster through this next little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to take the X location of the mouse and we're going to divide it. And we're going to divide that by the X of the screen. We're also going to take the Y and we're going to divide that. And we're going to divide that by the Y of the screen. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do print string again. I'll tell you what, I've just cancelled this as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what the result of that is. So for the X, let's see what this spits out. So now it gives us a percent. So we are at our, this is 0 0.9, but that's 90%. We are 90% away across the screen. So at this side, we are 0% away across the screen. And if we go around about the middle, there we go, we're at 50% of the screen. So we've basically just took the screen's position and now turned it into a percentage. And that's for both of them. Now, the, the reason we're doing this is because we're gonna say, if you get to 80% or 85% of the screen, we wanna flip the menu so it doesn't stick out of the edge of the screen and we can't click on it. So prior to being you know, anywhere under 80%, we don't care, do what you want. Leave the alignment at zero. But anything over, we need to flip the alignment and that's where we're going. I hope that makes sense. I hope you're still following me. Um, yeah, <laughs> basically. So, what we need to do now is we, we need to make a 2D vector. And the reason is, for this context menu, um, for us to set the anchor points, let me just set anchor set anchors in viewport this this anchor um, it, it takes in obviously these minimum X and Y's but these are made up as vector 2d structures so I actually need to drag off one of these and let's just put make 2d vector and basically that just takes an X and a Y and turns it into this vector structure so if they're not over 80% of the screen, we don't want to do anything. We just want to feed this normal default in uh, and, uh, into the anchors and, and, and everything should look fine. But then uh, another, if these are greater than 85%, we're going to need to do something else. But let's just set this bit up first. So this is our default anchor location. So let's just drag off that, promote it to a variable, and let's just put uh, anchor point. Whoa, what did I do there? Caps lock, anchor point. There we go. So we right click and we're, we're setting up the anchor point for where we currently are. And if you wanna have a quick look at that, I'll tell you what, I'll just do that. Right click, press play. There's our anchor points. So we're at 80% of the 80% to the X and only 60% down the Y. Because it goes 0, 0, and then maximum in this corner. So look, we're at 99% for everything. Brilliant. I'll slide that along because I feel like I'm gonna use that some more to explain. So now we've got the anchor point, we can we can start to set that. 
Now, <laughs> one of the weird things about um, the UI, you kind of need to create... Let me just show you. Rather than adjust this menu directly, what we're actually going to do is we're going to get... We're going to... In this canvas panel, this context menu is taking up a slot. And we're actually going to get reference to the slot. And then we're going to adjust the entire slot together rather than the actual... Here, here we go. You can see this anchor here is set underneath a slot, a canvas panel slot. We need to get reference to that slot. I'm glad that says that there because that makes it much easier to explain. Um, yeah, we, we, th these coordinates are based within a slot and we, we need to tap into that to get that information. Now, to do that, we're actually going to... We're going to tap into the context menu itself. And I take that's probably better we do that at the beginning. So, drag in your context menu, a reference. Drag off that and I think it's... Get slot something like that or slot widget as no I don't think that's it I don't think it no it's not that one um, something canvas oh there we go slot as canvas slot so we're getting the slot objects of the child of the canvas slot so essentially we're just getting a reference to this context menus slot <laughs> stay with me <laughs> now Obviously, that we need to use this reference to move our anchors. Let's promote that to a variable and let's just call that context menu slot. Let's check my spelling. Yep, context menu slot. And let's just set that. So right at the beginning of the game, we're setting up this reference. Okay. So... From this um, context menu slot, let's drag that out, get slot. We now want to set anchor. Okay, so we've got this context menu uh, slot and we're setting the anchor of the slot. Here we go. And we've got this anchor point already here. So our in anchor could go like that. Ah, but it's not. Because the in anchor is a little bit weird. And it takes uh, a min and a max. Bizarre. But it's the way it is. We can actually drag this off now and just connect these two up. We're not going to do it just like this. But um, we, we, we could do. We could just drag off get anchor point and let's let's stick these in. It's exactly the same thing. It's just a little bit cleaner looking. So if everything's cool, you know we're in the right place. We're going to set this anchor uh, and, and great. Let's hit compile. Let's test it. Oh oh oh! What's going on? This is weird. So we are getting some reference to it, but remember how in the designer when we move the anchor. The position's automatically adjusting, so then it's, it technically stays in the same place. So we actually want to zero this every time. So we want to set the anchor's position and zero the positions. So let's do that. So again, we're going to go off this uh, slot. I'm just going to duplicate this one and move it over. Just because I don't want loads of lines flowing off, you know, all the way across the, um, the page. Drag off that and set position. This takes an X and a Y. Let's link this up. Let's link that up. This takes an X and a Y. Now that is going to be our... No, actually we're going to leave it a zero because we want a zero at every time we update the anchor. So if I hit compile now and press play, look at that. It follows it. But look, this is exactly what I was saying. Because we've not not because we've not yet taken into consideration if we're this far down the screen, it's being cut off. Whoops, Where, where's that gone? It's now being cut off. So let's get that bit sorted. So this is where alignment comes in. 
So we're setting the anchors, we're setting the positions. Say what, I might need more space here, let's move that over. Now we need to work with this alignment. So, alignment is going to be like, um, it's going to be either like 1 or 0, depending on how, how we've got it set up. So, if you remember, this division gives us a percentage. Now, what we can do is we can drag off this and say greater than 0.8%, which is 80, 80%. I might go a little bit further and just say 0.85, just to get a bit more snug up to the edge of the screen. I might find that's too much and I might have to change that in a minute, but... Now we've got a boolean. So we're saying, well, if, if when you do this division, if you're over 85% of the screen is true, well, let's let's change these anchor points to be slightly different. So let's go off both of these. And let's do let's just do that. 0.85. Now, how are we going to set the data? So if these are true or false, we're going to want sort of different results. Now, not to make the screen any messier, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to slide these all down. And I'm actually going to set the alignment up front here. So let's grab another context menu slot reference. Let's get a set alignment. And let's just link this in. Whoa. Let's just link this up so it's all ready. So... This alignment takes in uh, a 2D structure again, so it's either going to be a 1, a 1, or a 0, whatever. And we need to kind of select based on a true or a false whether that's going to be a 0 or a 1. So, the optimal word there, I'm just tidying this up here because it is buggy. The optimal word there was select. Luckily there's a node called select and it allows you to do just that. It takes in a wildcard, an option, what do you want to select based on? Boolean's one of them. So is this division greater than 0.85? If that happens to be true, Let's have this set as a float. So if it's true, spit out 1. If it's false, spit out 0. And that's going to work perfectly for what we want. And we can do this for both of them. So actually, let's just control W. Let's pin these in. So for both of them now, if either of them are true, we want them to be 1. We want the alignment to be 1. Because 1 inherently flips. <laughs> The, the alignment um, so if that happens to be down here and then positions get updated to zero whoa we're well past that so we want that to be one and that to be one and that has still seemed to have cut off for some reason um, let me just double check what, what I've missed here um, for that to be cut off because I was totally convinced that was yeah, and I'll just come straight back to you. Okay, that was really quick and easy actually. Um, there was, in the design process, um, there's actually one thing that I forgot to, to mention. So, with your context menu selected, there's just a little box here that says size to content. Um, now obviously this is, this isn't within the context menu itself, because we did do that. Um, we did set, you know, all of these boxes to, to size to content. However, once we added it to the uh, the main HUD, um, I forgot to mention size to content. Now, if you click this, you'll see that it now works exactly as we expected. So essentially, the alignment was working, but because <laughs> because the actual canvas panel itself was shrunk, it, it's done it right. It's just not took into consideration the rest of the button that's overhanging. So size to content put that canvas box all the way around it and now now it works as expected so if we do one 
on the alignment, it, it, it flips where the, the anchor sits. So if, if now on the Y I set this to zero, you're going to see that over again. So where we would click here, we might just get away with a zero on the X. No. So where are we there? So you, as you can see there on the... Um, well, actually, that would flip anywhere. We, we've got away with the 80, 80 odd percent. But if um, if this blank was something like really long word, <laughs> it would overhang. Um, so I'm going to let you adjust them. Anyway, I'm going to let you adjust these percentages. Right. Now that works, we know the alignment wants to be 1 when it's um, true and, and 0 when it's false. So how are we going to get these, um, these in there? So we actually need to create a 2D vector. So let's do that. Make two, ooh, 2D vector. Make 2D vector. And... Yeah, that's going to be the X. And that's going to be the Y. And then that's going to plug in there, like that. So now, hopefully, if we press play, and I click over here, it flips. So you can see, top right hand corner, top right hand corner, get over here. Let's see how it's flipped out of the way. If do it there, it's flipped out of the way. So there you go, you've got a walk menu, uh, sorry, uh, a walk button, examine. Like I said, um, the menu itself's updating. However, when you press examine, I'm gonna follow up this with um, a, a guide on how to link data to it, so then it can read a description you've set. Um, and then obviously you've got the cancel menu. This may have ended up turning into a long one. Um, that last bit is a little bit more complicated than the rest. Um, like I said earlier, if, if anything didn't make sense or if it hasn't worked as expected, um, please leave a comment down below and I'll certainly come back to you and help you through it. Um, if this has helped you and if this is exactly what you've been looking for, Please give me a thumbs up so then I know that. Also consider commenting, tell me if um, you know if it all worked out well. I love the feedback. Um, if you're interested in getting more of a more of a description or more of a data related menu, um, as I said, I'm going to build on that examine menu. Please consider giving me a subscribe, um, and then when that video does come out, you don't miss it. And that's that. So thanks for watching this far. And I'll see you in another video. Thank you.